Hello students, this is Mrs. Barrow, and this screencast is to show you how to use your History Alive, the United States through Industrialism textbook and workbook online. Now, there are going to be some things that are different because obviously this is my account and I am a teacher, but I do have a student view button on it so I could show you mostly what it'll look like from your end. Now, this is the first page when you log in. It has the introduction from the book, and then it has it by unit over here. And if I scroll down, you'll see it has all of the units in the textbook. For each section, there's an essential question, a reading further, which is a section that gives you a little bit more information, and uh, literature, which is a secondary source writing about what may have happened during that time period. So our first section is called the First Americans. If you look up here, this table of contents, and then we're gonna hit the First Americans. Now, once you hit that, it goes over to text automatically because now you're going to be looking at the text part. Now I'm gonna show you some of the key things if you wanted to read to you and you have earbuds, I'll say it again, and you have earbuds, so I don't hear 30 computers starting to read this at different times during the class period, you can hit play and it will read and highlight the text for you. The First Americans. How did the first Americans adapt to their environment? Okay, so you get the idea with that. Let's say that you finished reading it and you're kind of like, you know what, I just read all that, and I don't know anything that I read, oh my goodness. And you know that you struggle with main idea in um, English language arts. You can click on main ideas, and it won't work on this page because it's angry at me. Let's see if it does something else there. Let's try the second section. We'll do that in a minute. Se habla español, pone español, y el libro en español. Los primeros americanos. ¿Cómo se adaptaron los primeros americanos al medio ambiente? So, that being said, let's turn it back to English. Notice this is the introduction. That could be why there aren't any main ideas. So we'll revisit that on a later page. If you scroll down, there's a previewing activity because it's the introduction. It'll ask you questions, usually of a creative nature, like um, carefully determine the photograph of a Canadian forest. Imagine that you suddenly find yourself in this environment. Brush and a thick forest of fir and pine trees surround the mountain valley. It is late in the fall and getting cold. The pond is not yet frozen. You must survive here for a year. Okay. And then it asks you, describe the shelter you would build, the clothing you would make to protect yourself from the elements, and the tools you would create to acquire the food. Okay. So you would just type in here, I would make a shelter out of, if you scroll up, you'll notice that there are no bricks. So obviously you're not going to make a brick house. What do we have a lot of? Wood. So I would make a shelter out of wood that has fallen from the trees. Next part to the question. The clothing you would make to protect yourself from the elements. Well, it's going to be fall and winter, so it's going to be cold. And what is better than animal fur? Sorry, people who don't believe in killing animals. If you need to survive, sometimes they must die. So I would hunt animals for fur and for food because it also asks you um, what you would create to acquire food. So what would I create to acquire food? To hunt the animals, I would make a spear from vine sticks, and sharp rocks. 
Okay, so this has explained everything up here, except for maybe you could add that the fur is to keep you warm in the winter. And then after that, we move on to new section. You could have also gone to next section up here. It's on both sides of the page, which is kind of awesome. All right, let's try that main idea thing again. And Merry Christmas. If you look, all the blue words highlight the main ideas. Okay, here's an awesome map. If you clicky on the map, it gets bigger and you can look at it closer with the caption. Scroll down to the interactive notebook part. Okay, this one sees because it has check my answers is so that you can test your own learning and do it until you get it right so you know for the future. So let's just be random here. Okay. Um, that didn't work for me. Uh-huh. That didn't work for me. This happens to you. You just click off to the side. It'll disappear. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Check my answers. Nope. Only got one right. So you reset it and you do it again. That part is not for a grade. Down here could be for a grade if it says so on your activity list. So this one you would answer questions. Uh, this you would define that word. The next one is a picture. And there's a couple of options for picture that I'd like to show you. This adds text. This adds shapes. I want a cool arrow. Yes. Now let's say I want the arrow to point up. You just take this part. And boop. Arrow goes up. Oh, but I don't want a black arrow. I want a purple arrow. Let's make it purple. Jeez. It's a purple arrow. Now let's say I want the background to be black and nifty. Oh, oh, wrong one. I need to actually select the thing. Let's make the arrow purple again because we all like purple here. All right. Now let's make the background black. Or not. Maybe I was lying to you. All right. This is a pen. And if you go to this... You can draw in a second color. And if everything stinks, you can throw things out. All right. Then use the map in section one to answer these questions. Scroll up to the top. That's the map you're going to use to answer the questions. Okay, next section. Scroll down. You're supposed to read all of this, by the way. I'm just scrolling down to show you all the parts before the end of the screencast. All right, this one would be a drag and drop. And then you would check your answers. And then answers of or here, you actually probably will not have this answer button, just FYI. Okay, so you get the idea about the interactive notebook. If you're assigned to do the interactive notebook, you have to make sure you do all the questions at the bottom. Uh, let's say I need to skip to section five. I could go here and go to section five. Let's say I'm on the wrong chapter. The section five doesn't look familiar. I come over here. I could go to a different chapter. Now, let's see. Also, there's usually vocabulary on the intro page. If you click notebook up here when you're on the text, it takes you down to the notebook part. That's all it does. And you can still scroll back up and have the text. Lesson game. Every lesson has a game that you're going to do. Let's go back to lesson one. Okay. Let's see. Migration and adaptation. Scientists believe the earliest Americans were hunters who came from Asia during the last age by, I'm going to say land bridge, because I think we did just read that. Submit. Correct, you've earned one point. At the end, it'll tell you how many points you have, and it'll let me know how many points you have, so I know what kind of a job you're doing. Scores. Uh, right now, the lesson game, I got a... 35 out of 50 on one of them. This keeps track of all your stuff, by the way. All of these things are just for me completing things and trying it out. But it'll let you know, out of all your lessons, how you are doing. Vocabulary cards. You can read adapting. Hmm, I don't remember what that is. Flip the card. Oh, wow, that works out pretty well. Now 
let's see. Next card. Next vocabulary word. It's a great way to study for vocabulary. Now, if you go to resources, okay, there's your personal notes. Any files that I have shared with you, I did not share any for this one. Glossary, in case you're not sure about the meaning of a word. Let me look it up here by letter. Maps, which pretty much has a lot of the maps in the textbook here. To view them, you just click the view, by the way. Correlations. It's thinking really hard. It's totally not sure. There we go. Section one. It gives you all of the standards that are aligned to that section from Florida State. And then biographies is nifty for projects. You just find the person you want to write a project on. Let's say it's um, Ben Franklin. I would go to F for Franklin because that's his last name. Scroll down until I find old Benny boy. Franklin, ta-da. Tells you his birth date, his death date, has a picture of him, and the biography. So that's a really great resource also. And those are the basics of your History Alive online textbook. If you have any further questions, please feel free to ask me, your teacher, Mrs. Barrow. And uh, keep in mind that during the school year, it will tell you your upcoming assignments. As of right now, there are none because it's the middle of summer. And I am making screencasts in the summer. So everybody have a great day, and I hope you're enjoying your time here in my classroom at Bayonet Point Middle School.